I'm gonna add a little bit more of this. I think this is the prettiest one I've made so far. Absolutely. Oh yeah. That is a one biter. Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com. It's a beautiful morning, I am enjoying the views of this canyon and we're about to head to breakfast and then after breakfast they have booked us for a spa treatment and then after that we are heading back to Amman and we have been in Jordan for over a week now and we have yet to try Jordan's national dish. So I am looking forward to that for lunch and that's the plan for the day. Thank you. I got a bunch of vegetables, I topped it with some nuts and then some olive oil. And I'm just gonna squeeze on all of this lemon juice. There are cucumbers and oh, and a lot of arugula. We're walking down the canyon to the spa. One of the things that's really cool about this place is that the Ma'in hot springs, right, right where we are right now, these hot springs were formerly used by King Herod thousands of years ago. We made it to the spa. It's really nice, they have their own private waterfall outside, but we are getting ready for an hour spa session, so I'm gonna turn off the camera now. I will give you all an update in an hour from now. It is over. That was an entire hour that went by way too fast, and it went by in a little bit of a blur. That was fantastic. We're finished. <laughs> Ying was in the room, a separate room from me. I finished a little bit before you. I think I we have tea. Wow, nice. The private swimming pool and waterfall hot spring they have at the spa is really beautiful, but unfortunately we don't have time to use it because we gotta get back, check out of the hotel, and we're on our way back to Amman. The drive to Amman took probably a, a little over an hour and we have made it back to Amman. We are having lunch today at a restaurant called Tawahin Al Hawa, which is a well-known restaurant in Amman. It's a, it's a giant restaurant. They can accommodate huge groups. And this restaurant is especially known for serving Jordan's national dish, which is called Mansaf. And that is the one main dish that we have not yet tried, or I have not yet tried since being in Jordan, so I am Looking forward to eating it. And in the, the center of the table is a giant golden tray, um, which is the traditional mansaf feasting platter. And we're waiting on our food now. In Jordan, they take the raw vegetable platters to the next level. Look at this. Look at this um, just structure of raw vegetables. I'm gonna grab a cucumber. Mm. Cooling cucumber. And I love how they just they just put whole vegetables on there. You got whole cucumbers, tomatoes, they're just whole entire lemons on this plate. Wonderful. They have just brought us our tray of mansaf. It is it is stunningly beautiful. I'm gonna do my best to just quickly explain what the dish is because it's very unique and I can personally say that I've never eaten anything like it. So there are a couple of main components to mansaf. The first is rice, and so on the bottom of the tray is rice. And then on top of the rice are big, big, huge chunks of Jordanian lamb, which are cooked in a yogurt, which I will explain more about very soon. And then over the everything is a, a big sprinkle of pine nuts. But the, probably the most important component of mansaf is the dehydrated goat yogurt, which is known as jamid. They have brought out a chunk of jamid, and this is dehydrated goat yogurt. And oftentimes you'll see them drying 
this yogurt on top of the roof in the sunlight or on top of their tent, Bedouin tent in the, in the desert, <coughs> dehydrating this and preserving it. But in order to prepare this dish, they take this, they take, it, take the jamid and they make it into a soupy sauce. And so this is actually like a, the gravy, which is made from the jamid. And this is what the lamb is cooked in. And then also this is what you, you pour over the rice and the lamb to eat it. And before I dig into the main platter, I have a cup of the jamid, which is, I'm just gonna sip on. Mm. You can definitely smell goat. You can, yeah, you can really smell goat in that. Mm. Oh, wow. That is sour and very goaty. It kind of has a cheese, a cheesy, yogurty taste to it, but it's salty and sour and, yeah, very goaty. That's delicious. Oh, wow. Pour the jamid like this on the mensa for people to start all around oh, start okay. eating. So this is what we do. You pour the jamid. So you ball it up? Yeah. With a piece of meat inside it. And maybe some of the fita hat Some of the shrak. This is the shrak bread. Yeah, see the oh, okay. shrak bread. You just go like this. <laughs> There's nothing like it. It's the best meal ever. There is a very traditional process and method of eating mansaf, and so Fadi just showed it to me, and I'm gonna do my best to, to try it out. Get a spoon of the jamid and pour it over the, the rice and area, and my lamb chunk and the rice and those pine nuts. You can only use your three fingers, well, your two fingers and your thumb. And what you do is you grab a piece of the lamb. And by the way, this is local Jordanian grass-fed free-range lamb. And you take a little piece of the lamb and then you get it into, you mix it in with some rice and make sure you get a lot of that jamid in there because that's where a lot of the flavor and the, 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 the heartiness of the dish comes from. And then once you have kind of a good, a good amount within your, your fingers like that, then you transfer it to your palm and you start to, to work it into a, a ball. Not, not really squeezing, but the motion like this, yeah? Oh. You have to make a circular motion so it becomes like a ball. Oh yeah, okay, so there's a there's definitely a, a unique, um, it definitely takes some skill to do this because the... Not bad for a first time. The rice um, is sticky, so it sort of, it sticks to your fingers, but, so you don't want to really squeeze it too tight, but you more want to yes. play with it a little bit yes. to get it into a, a circular, That's very good. a circular shape. This is my very first mansa ball. And you want to eat it, again, you want to eat it only with your, your three fingers, your thumb and your two fingers. And then another thing is that you don't want to touch your fingers to your mouth so that your fingers remain clean. Wow. That is awesome. That lamb is so silky tender. The rice has a little bit of a, a sticky texture to it. Kind of a, um, you can tell that it's been cooked for a long time with some spices. And then, yeah, it's all about that jamid. That is really the, the main component of, this, of the entire mansaf. That is what gives it the flavor, the richness, the sauce, the gravy, and additionally those pine nuts are also fantastic. They're, they're crispy and fragrant, and wow. Yeah, again, this is a dish that I've never had, I've never had any dish even close to this, I don't think. This is very unique, very interesting, and extraordinarily delicious. A little bit more of that jamid in there to hold it all together and ensuring I just go in with the three fingers. Another thing I wanted to quickly mention is traditionally you will stick your left hand behind your back when you eat and so you only eat with your right hand. 
Oh yeah, there you go. You can see if you don't if you don't squeeze it too hard, you can see that the it sort of forms into a ball much easier. You just kind of play with it in your palm, roll it around, and that way the rice all sticks to each other. And you gotta have that little piece of lamb right in the middle. After eating this ball of mansa, I'm gonna follow it by a bite of onion. Wow. And the onion is topped with uh, sumac. Oh, I love that combination. It's quite mild, but just, oh, but just juicy and crisp and refreshing. That really contrasts the, the richness and the saltiness of the mansaf. That's fantastic. Cheers, buddy. This restaurant is also well known for their chili olives. So I've got some of the chili olives and a piece of chili on my plate. I'm gonna pick them up together. Oh wow. Mm. Really salty, spicy, mm. and that, that just complements the meal. One of the things that I've already learned about eating mansa is that you have to have the right ratio of rice to meat to Jamid yogurt. Because if you don't have the right ratio, it won't stick together and make a ball. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this to my rice portion. And then also it's served with um, this, this bread, which is called shrak. And also this is common, you can eat it with some of this. You tear off a, a piece. You mix that into your bite with everything. Making sure you have that right ratio of everything. I think that'll do. Such a fantastic way to eat. I think this is the prettiest one I've made so far. Absolutely. That's like a Good golf job. ball size. And then, you, well, another, another thing I love is how you just drop this into your mouth. Oh yeah. That is a one biter. Mm. That is not light food. That, it, that, that will fill you up for sure. I am stuffed right now. The lamb, the jamid, the entire, the entire dish was just stunning. And one more thing to show you. Your hand should look something like this when you are finished eating. Once you are sure you're finished, you can lick your fingers. This is exactly what I want to do when I see my hand like this. Oh. That's just like the final, the final little bites of flavor. Oh, you can taste that goat. It's fantastic. And then finally, a quick wash. There's some mint in here and some lemon. They don't do anything small when you are having a feast like this. So they have just brought out dessert, a giant platter of fruit and another platter of different desserts. Mainly what I want to eat for dessert though, after that mansaf, is this orange. And he peeled it very nicely, leaving the, the hat on, and then folding back the skin. That is so juicy and a little bit sour and a little bit sweet. I am now sitting, leaning back in my chair and having a cup of mint tea. Oh yeah, you can taste that mint so nicely in there. This is probably the best way to end a mansa feast. <clears throat> and also, it is traditional to take a nap after eating mansa. And I think perhaps that tradition was born because not only is it a tradition, but I think it's a mandatory thing to do after you eat mansa. You, you just naturally start falling asleep. Are we going for a cup of fun? We're having one last cup of coffee on our way out of the door. Yeah. Oh, that's good. What I loved so much about that dish is that you can actually taste 
the fields or the pastures where the goats and the lambs have grazed. You can taste the land in that meal. Yes. After we finished with that incredible lunch, we drove back over to La Locanda Hotel, which is the hotel that we stayed at when we first arrived to Amman. Our trip with Jordan Tourism Board is finished right now, but Ying and I are gonna be here in Amman for the next two full days. Tonight for dinner, a local friend has invited Ying and I over to their house to have dinner. So a local homemade family Jordanian meal for dinner coming up very soon. We are all sitting down. There is a beautiful spread of food and I'm gonna begin with the fate, which is um, a dish that includes hummus and a variety of other sauces and, and seasonings which is then mixed with bread which has been soaked and has absorbed a bunch of broth. And so then that's mixed with the hummus and then it creates, it creates kind of a fluffy hummus and then it is topped with some minced meat and some fried pine nuts. Oh, wow. Mmm. <laughs> that is amazing. You can really taste the garlic in there. And then yeah, it's like a, it's like a fluffy hummus. It's creamy and rich, but at the same time, as opposed to a, a pure hummus, it's it's more more fluffy. One of the main dishes that we're eating tonight is called warog ukusa, and it there is both zucchini and grape leaves, which are filled with a combination of rice and minced meat, and then cooked along with some lamb ribs and some lamb fat, as well as some some seasonings and also some olive oil. I gotta go in for one of the, the grape leaf rolls first. Whoa. That is amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's sour and then what I really like is the rice inside. The rice inside sort of just melts together because it's so, it's almost like a a pudding texture, it's so, so melted all together. And it's, it's mostly kind of sour and salty and you can taste that fragrance of the, of the lamb in there because it's all cooked and just mingled together. Oh, a sushi. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's like a sushi roll. <laughs> it's amazing. This one is zucchini, which is filled with the same mixture. Oh yeah, you gotta see that cross section. And the minced meat in there and the rice. And then it's all filled into a zucchini. Oh. oh yeah, that's amazing as well. It's like a similar texture as eggplant because it's been cooked for so long so it just it just dissolves in your mouth. And then again, that rice meat mixture is is just silky, silky creamy. I also got a little piece of the lamb fat which I will break off a piece with bread and you can already see how caramelized that lamb fat is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you can you can just taste lamb, and that is so soft and tender, and just yeah, full of lamb juices and and flavors. Ying and I just made it back to the hotel after a fantastic home family cooked Jordanian meal. Ying and I are going to be in Amman for two more days. So that's gonna be it for today. Thank you all very much for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and also make sure you subscribe for lots more videos and I'll see you tomorrow for another day in Jordan. Why? <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> that's a big bite. <laughs> that's, that's the Mansaf bite. That's the Mansaf bite. <laughs>